fellow coffee botherers. In this video, I'm going to be talking about and using the Gaja Brera. This isn't an unboxing video as such, as Gaja Direct didn't have one of these in stock the last time I was up there. So when they gave me units on loan to review, they had to give me their demo model, which has already been unboxed. If you watch this video, unboxing the Gadget Anima, and use your imagination slightly, this will tell you more or less what to expect when you come to unboxing and setting up your Gadget Brera. It's practically the same process. So without further ado, let's get on with it. I'll make some coffees with it and then let you know what I think. So when you turn it on, the first time you're using it, it'll prompt you to fill the water tank and to fill the grind hopper with coffee beans. So let's fill the water tank. Now it's priming itself. Automatically rinsing. Ready to go, so we'll fill the bean hopper. And of course we're using good quality, freshly roasted coffee beans. So when you're using this machine for the first time, it will prompt you to make a few shots of espresso so that everything can get calibrated. The first one or two shots you make will taste really bad. They're not for drinking, they're for putting in the sink. So just make three, four, maybe five shots of espresso and then start making coffees. So it's ground, it's now pulling the first shot. Yours will look worse than this because it'll be the first one it's making. And that doesn't look too bad. But this machine's already been used. And there we go. So now I'm going to make some coffees. But first, I'll need some cups. There we go. So first of all, I'm going to make a cappuccino. So a single shot of espresso. I'm going to froth milk with the Panarello wand. And then we're going to make a cappuccino. I'm going to pull a single shot of espresso. And then I'll froth the milk using the Panarello steam wand, which are great for making bigger stiffer foam for cappuccino. So we've got the espresso, now I'm going to steam the milk using the Panarello steam wand. So with this machine we just move the dial to this steam position and as you see it starts almost straight away. Purge a bit of water out now it's properly heated up. It's 
screen, quite big bubbles, but you do have a little bit of control. You can lift the jug up a little bit more to just slow down the aeration, just make it not quite as stiff. Reduce the foam slightly. Now it's just heating up. 60 65 degrees Celsius and we're about there there we go always wipe the wand Look at that perch school cappuccino foam. There we go, cappuccino. So next I'm going to make a flat white. So for that I'm going to pull off the Panarello steam wand. I'm going to use a steam pipe as a steam wand and I'm going to pull a double shot of espresso for flat white. We want a double espresso for our flat white. So I'm just going to press the espresso button twice. Double shot. Shot one, it'll grind and pour a second double, a second shot for our double shot. So we've got the espresso and I'm going to pull the Panarello wand off to just use a steam pipe like a professional steam wand. Aiming for a ripping paper sound, just a hissing sound. Just fairly gentle aeration from microfoam, which is what you want from flat white. Just smaller balls, that's all. Stretched it enough, we're just heating now. We've got the jug tilted so that we're distributing them bubbles throughout the milk. Trying to get a vortex going, spinning the milk. And just heating it up to about 60, 65 degrees Celsius. 
which is about there. Give the one bit wipe and a purge. Texture doesn't look too bad. I'm just spinning the milk to polish it off. It just grooms the milk slightly, makes it a little bit better when you do that. So we've got two milkies, next I'm going to make an Americano, so just hot water and espresso. You can do this two ways, I don't mind which way you do it, you can either pull the shot of espresso into the cup and then add the hot water or you can add the hot water first and then add the espresso. So this time I'm going to do the espresso first and then the hot water and I'm going to make quite a strong Americano so we're going to do a double espresso. So we've got the espresso, now we need hot water. So we'll just put the cup under the steam wand and then turn this to the hot water position. Just do it to your taste, however much hot water you want with your espresso. Stop that about there. There we have an Americano. There we go. So you've seen me making a few coffees with the Gaja Brera and you're probably wondering what I think about it, so I'll tell you. The Gaja Brera is one of the entry level machines in the automatic or bean to cup range from Gaja and it's one of the most popular in the Gaja range. It's compact, it's fairly good looking I think, although beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It looks and feels well built for the money, I've always thought that the Brera looks like it costs more than it does. It has a front access water tank which is perfect for anyone who needs to put the coffee machine somewhere without much space above it, although you'll need at least some space to get coffee beans into the hopper of course. In terms of the coffee, I'm just as impressed with coffee from the Brera as from any of the other Gaja Beans Cup coffee machines and that makes sense because it has more or less the same grinder and the same brewing unit as all the other Gaja Beans Cup coffee machines. So where coffee is concerned, you're unlikely to experience much difference in cup quality between the Brera and machines much further up in the range, which mainly differ in terms of features rather than cup quality. As with all the Gaja Bean to Cup coffee machines, a double shot is a double shot with the Brera, which is one of the things I particularly like about the Gaja Bean to Cup coffee machines. It may seem obvious that if you press a double shot button, you'd want double the volume of espresso made with double the amount of ground coffee, not just a bigger, weaker espresso. This isn't the case though with all machines, but it is with all of the Gaja Bean to Cup machines. It has a 1.2 litre water tank, a dread drawer or dump box or whatever you want to call it with a capacity for eight used pucks of coffee. 
The max cup height is 12 centimeters and it has five ground adjustments and three strength settings. The strength settings are another thing I really like about Gaja Beans Cup Machines versus some of the other Beans Cup Machines on the market. They make it really easy to know what dose in grams the machine is going to grind. And it's also really simple to reprogram the shot volume by simply pressing and holding the shot button and then pressing it to stop when you've got the desired volume. When it comes to dose, the one bean setting is 7 grams, the two bean setting is 9 grams, and the three bean setting is 11 grams. And then when you press the espresso button twice for a double shot, you'll get 14, 18 or 22 grams ground for your espresso, and you'll get double the volume. It has a bypass shoe and integrated grinders are the weakest link when it comes to espresso quality. So if you wanted to occasionally use the Brera a bit more along the lines of a home barista machine, trying to dial in and improve the extraction, you can use a standalone grinder and bypass the integrated grinder via the bypass shoe. Just keep in mind, if you do this, the maximum bypass dose is about eight grams. This will depend on grind size. And I have heard from people who've dose around 10 grams via the bypass shoot, but it's worth just keeping in mind that theoretically, you could damage the brewing unit over time by overdosing. If you do, it's probably not a huge deal, as brand new brewing units for this machine cost about 70 pounds, but it's probably worth just avoiding that and dosing seven or eight grams at a time via the bypass shoot. So there you go, you've seen me using the Gadget Brera. I hope that helps you to decide if this might be the right bean to cup coffee machine for you, but check the description below for various links which might be helpful if you're still undecided. Thank you very much for watching. Please click the like button. Thanks, apparently it does something to do with the YouTube algorithm and more people end up watching the video, so do that. Cheers, and if you enjoyed this video, then why not click here to watch another one. And don't forget to become an official Coffee Botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe and to become a fully accredited Coffee Botherer, also known as Patreon supporter. Just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog Kev. Tatty bye.